We're here to discuss Uncle Tom's Cabin and Blackface today, so I hope everyone will find it relevant. Okay, well, thanks for that, Sarah. So well, let's have a look at some of the past, okay? Within the historical consciousness of Great Britain or the UK and America, blackface has a positive as well as a negative connotation, depending on the historical legacy attached to what blackface actually means. In the UK, when blackface is done, it is usually done, usually done from a positive perspective. Okay, usually done from a positive perspective. And that is because there was a migrations that took place around about the 10th, 11th century of dark skinned people from North Africa and the Iberian Peninsula, which is Portugal and Spain, known as Moors. They will call, we use the word Moors, Moors, which is the adjective, which basically means dark or black. And many of them married from local women, and most of their cultural practices was established amongst the English and the Welsh people primarily, okay, which was known as Morris dancing. The negative perspective of blackface that we see that's taking place in the UK have only really started round about the 1930s and 40s. When racial segregation in America started to spread, the idea of blackface within the UK started to change. So blackface then was considered to be a form of to be a form of ridicule to a large extent. Okay, so here, if you look at this image here, this is Morris Danson. These are English people, obviously in blackface. Okay, so these are what is known as Morris dances. Okay. Morris dancing comes from the word Moorish dancing. Moorish dancing was something that black or dark skin Arabs and Africans did back in North Africa and in Spain and Portugal. And it represented their victories over the Spaniards over during the 800 year, 800 year period. Okay? Blackface, and from this perspective, is considered positive. Here is blackface, more contemporary speaking, in the UK. Okay? where they've actually darkened up their, their faces. Now, in this case, it would be considered a form of ridicule now to imitate the bobsleigh team. And this comes from the film um, Cool Runnings, which was done back in the 1990s. Okay, Most of the black people who were either from West African and from African Caribbean backgrounds actually start to see it as a form of ridicule. We know what took place a few years ago where a black person, uh, a black professor at Cardiff University, who was a scientist professor, he basically, one of his students basically blackened up his face, dressed up similar to his professor, and said he was imitating his professor. And not just black people, but white people were quite incensed by this. So what we find from this perspective is that one of the reasons why a lot of white people in the UK uh, are unable to understand why dark-skinned people are incensed by this practice is because they don't understand the historical connotation of blackface in the UK and what blackface meant in the USA. Any questions at all, guys? Because I've spoken a lot. Anything you want to suggest or say or to clarify or to elaborate? My question, literally just quick. Um, do you think that there is such thing as a... Um, do you think there's such thing as a positive stereotype? So um, Jamaicans are very quick, you know, Asians are very clever. Um, do you think it's um, harmful or do you think it's... It's, um, do you think positive stereotypes are, um, yeah. okay. what do you think uh, of them kind of yeah. thing? Right, it depends of the situation. We have to understand things from people's perspective. Now, stereotypes are always in one form or another. You've got positive stereotypes and you've got negative stereotypes. So for instance, when they say Chinese people or Japanese people, or Korean people are good at maths, it's a stereotype. Okay, however, that would be considered a positive stereotype. Okay, but the problem with that is when, because all stereotypes have an element of truth. The problem with stereotypes is when it's superimposed 
on all people from that population, not some, all. That's the problem with stereotypes, whether it's positive or negative. So in this case, if you're looking at the positive stereotype, as I give you the example, the Chinese are naturally good at maths. The negative stereotype here now is whereby they are actually demeaning or defaming a group of people with a stereotype, okay? So for instance, when you look at Jamaicans, if you ask the average person, white person about Jamaicans, just tell me something basic about Jamaicans. There's usually three things that come to mind. Music, <laughs> dancing, yes, yeah, singing, womanizing, and uh, marijuana or ganja, okay? So you don't hear the, so, the, so those stereotypes, even though there's truth to it, not all black people smoke ganja, not all black people are womanizers and into reggae music, okay? So that's the problem with stereotypes. And I'll, I'll put you in now, uh, Sarah. Uh, let me just finish this. So to answer your question, there is positive and negative stereotypes, but when you're dealing with Jamaicans, uh, because of our legacy of slavery and how Europeans depicted us in science, biology, over the last three or four centuries, um, it's usually done in a derogatory and inferiority way. So when people imitate us, they usually imitate those stereotypical or labeling um, aspects, which we ourselves don't necessarily see as being true representatives or representations of who we are. Yeah, I just want to um, sort of share, I guess, when it comes down to positive stereotype, the non-black or persons of color people tend to feel that even positive stereotypes nowadays are deemed racist. So in a sense, for example, that element of saying, oh, um, Chinese people are good at maths, you can't say that nowadays. That's how they feel, you know? And so it's creating a, a vacuum or a space, a, a place where people are fearful of saying almost anything at all in relation to stereotype. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I think uh, to what Fadili is saying uh, about like, you know, when do you, when is it okay, essentially, for a person to describe a positive stereotype or for an entire group of people? Um, I don't think that should ever be a, a first resort in any case. And I imagine that that only happens when when a person is having a conversation with at least one other person. So my own view is that in, when you're having such a conversation and you want to describe uh, whoever it is that you want to describe in that moment, it is best to actually stick to whoever it is you're describing as much as you can. If it is a person that you're associated with and you want to describe them without actually naming them, then you can say, oh, this person who I know from wherever such an environment, this is what they're really good at. And then leave it at that, okay? I don't, I personally don't see what, what, what good comes out of describing, uh, you know, the, the general populace of where that person is from. Uh, using those positive connotations, unless you want to praise the entirety of, you know, whoever that is. And you know that that's not true anyway. Depends on who carries the stereotype as well. If there is Chaga and their neighbors and they're making fun of each other, they're speaking from a point of familiarity. They coexist and they understand each other. And a lot of this messaging about how to talk about differences, how to talk about stereotypes, it's not directed at people of color, it's directed at white people. And now this is just my opinion. I do believe in breaking the rules, but I think before you can break the rules, you have to understand the rules. So before we can move on to using any kind of positive stereotype whatsoever, people have to first understand historical context, have to understand lived experience, have to get to know people, and then maybe once we've reached a point of familiarity, they're allowed to step beyond a little bit. Are you asking too much from people? But you have to ask for everything, otherwise we'll get nothing. Thanks for that, guys. That was a nice, lovely discussion. I enjoyed that. Wonderful. Thanks, Billy, for starting us off. Excellent. <laughs> no worries, no worries. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> what I think we'll do, we'll leave this till next week, actually. This part is looking at representation of blackface in the media. 
and on the social level as well. So we're going to be looking at racism, Jim Crowism, which 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 marries into racial segregation, you know, uh, civil rights and violence towards certain people. So yeah, I think we'll leave this till next week. I think that'll be a nice part two for us to get into.